Welcome to the debate. Today we are confronting, well, perhaps the most unsettling challenge presented by the Interstellar Visitor 3 Atlas, an object whose very existence seems to defy our understanding of natural mechanics. We've all seen the evidence, the uh, rigid geometric symmetry of its shell, the precise, almost mechanical arc of its tail, and that, that impossible core, which analysts have described as a void or maybe more chillingly, a black spot in reality. The whole structure just suggests engineering beyond our current comprehension. But uh, today we're focusing solely on its movement, specifically its high-speed transit toward and then behind the sun, which is scheduled for October 2025. So the central question before us is this. Does the precise observed sunward acceleration which resulted in the object aligning almost perfectly for that October 2025 solar conjunction, does this represent a deliberate engineered maneuver, maybe designed for concealment, maybe repositioning, or conversely, can this behavior, however extreme it looks, still be accounted for by non-gravitational forces operating, well, merely at the absolute limits of unknown physical laws completely divorced from any kind of strategic intent. Hmm. I'll be arguing that the observed timeline and trajectory strongly indicate strategic steering and, yes, engineered intent, utilizing the necessary invisibility of that conjunction window for a critical purpose. And I, uh, I come at it from a fundamentally different angle. While the data regarding 3-8 Lass's movement is, it's undeniably shocking. It proves it's active, not passive, absolutely. We must exercise extreme caution before we start attributing terrestrial concepts like strategic intent or, you know, hiding to a phenomenon that is demonstrably, well, it seems to be rewriting space-time itself. To leap directly from observing anomalous motion to concluding tactical malice, that's a massive inferential gap, isn't it? I maintain that what we're seeing is likely an extreme manifestation of unknown physical phenomena, probably inherent to its propulsion system. Its path might just be driven by operational efficiency, not necessarily surveillance evasion against us. Okay, I see why you emphasize caution regarding intent, but the data itself just screams deliberate action to me. Let's look directly at the tracking data. This object isn't merely being pushed by chaotic forces. It, it's steering. Consider the observation of that 0.19 degree course shift executed over just 14 hours. Now, at the scale and speed of this object, that represents a massive, sustained deviation. And crucially, the deviation was perfectly linear and controlled. It exhibited none of the chaotic tumbling or random fluctuation that you'd expect from, say, natural outgassing from a comet nucleus. This acceleration was deliberately sunward, and it was perfectly aligned with that observed plume signature. Analysts, they struggled to classify this effect, eventually likening the signature to high-powered ion drive exhaust, but the required thrust level was calculated to be hundreds of times greater than anything we currently possess. But here's the strategic consequence of that precise burn. The resulting trajectory aligned almost perfectly with Earth's orbital plane, placing it in exact conjunction with the sun during October 2025. Now, this timing ensured the object would vanish behind the solar glare, completely unobservable from Earth for a critical period. Why execute such a precise, powerful course correction, costing massive energy, if not to ensure we wouldn't see what happens next during that necessary blind spot? The action, the timing, the resulting invisibility, it makes a powerful case for tactical adjustment. That's... That's a compelling argument if you look purely at the result. The mechanics of it, sure. But we have to look beneath the veneer of familiar physics, look at the operational reality of the object itself. You focus on the 0.19 degree shift as a precise strategic maneuver, okay? I acknowledge that shift proves immense non-gavitational forces are at work, no question. However, when we talk about a core described as a black spot in reality and potentially a space-time cavity, a feature apparently capable of bending and twisting background starlight into these warped spirals. Well, we're dealing with physics so far outside our standard models that applying a linear strategic assumption like hiding becomes fundamentally problematic. I mean, if 3 Idolus is a vehicle that can move space around itself, 
or maybe jump distances without conventional inertia, as perhaps suggested by the observed light manipulation, then the concept of it needing a slow, sustained 14-hour thruster burn just to achieve a tiny 0.19 degree course correction, that presents a profound efficiency paradox, doesn't it? Why rely on a mechanism that sort of mimics primitive propulsion when your primary drive can potentially defy distance itself? Furthermore, attributing the October 2025 conjunction as a deliberate hiding maneuver, while that's an assumption based on predictable orbital geometry, conjunctions happen, the observed acceleration may simply be a necessary byproduct of its internal 11.2 second infrared pulse. Maybe its exotic propulsion system interacting with the local gravitational environment to stabilize its field and not really a targeted course correction for tactical concealment against us. Your point about the space-time cavity being outside standard strategy is compelling, I'll grant you that. But it only reinforces my view that if it is engineering, it's engineering of necessity where every single move is calculated. I'm just not convinced by the idea that the precision we observed is merely some chaotic byproduct of stabilization. Let's go back to the concept of design. The movement was steering, it wasn't tumbling. The object's acceleration signature was so precise it could be modeled with high fidelity as a controlled push, perfectly aligned with its plume. But look deeper into the internal diagnostics. We know the object displays rigid geometric symmetry in its outer shell. More profoundly, the analysis of the internal power emissions, those pulsed photonic discharges, showed that the frequency structure mirrored prime number sequences. Now, that level of complexity specifically encoded in the energy output is universally recognized in data analysis as intentional, almost communicative. It's like the equivalent of a single cell organism suddenly solving complex differential equations, right? If we accept the possibility that these are instructions or maybe circuitry inherent to its operation, then the precision of the movement seems clearly indicative of design and command. And that reinforces the idea that the course adjustment was deliberately commanded for a desired outcome, namely the blind spot. Hmm. I'm intrigued by that claim. The internal pulses mirroring prime number sequences, that is a stunning piece of information. It moves us past just advanced technology and into something like intentional information architecture. But, but even accepting that information is being conveyed, we still face that efficiency paradox. If this is truly some kind of transit chamber capable of folding geometry and rewriting light, why the massive inefficiency of the 14-hour burn? If it's truly capable of cheating distance itself, why bother with the slow, observable process of standard delta-v propulsion just to achieve invisibility? I suggest that the visible acceleration, that 0.19-degree push, might be misinterpreted. It may not be propulsion in the traditional sense we think of. Rather, it might be the necessary observable consequence of stabilizing a massive energy drain may be required to prepare the core for a dimensional transition or some kind of field optimization. The thruster plume signature you describe might just be the, the exhaust required to keep the exotic drive system from tearing itself apart during activation. The need for a blind spot doesn't necessarily imply vulnerability to Earth's telescopes, but perhaps implies a phase of maximum energetic flux that might be unstable in an unshielded, high-mass environment like near the sun. That interpretation, that the blind spot is required for energetic stabilization, it's plausible. Okay, but it leads us right back to intent when we examine what happened after the concealment phase. The vulnerability, or maybe the window for necessary deployment, is exactly what the subsequent revelations seem to confirm. The solar conjunction wasn't a perpetual black hole. It was clearly used for a transition. When three atlas emerged post-conjunction, the change was dramatic. Its apparent size had increased by nearly 40%. More critically, pre- and post-conjunction captures showed it splitting, and not chaotic, random fragmentation like a dying comet, but splitting into precise symmetrical segments. Analysts describe these rigid symmetrical arcs peeling away, revealing three secondary bodies trailing the primary object in perfect rigid formation. The sheer complexity of that maneuver suggests 
It utilized the invisibility window to transition from a single monolithic body to what observers immediately started calling a system or a construct or, you know, undeniably a machine behaving with purpose. The blind spot was strategically utilized to facilitate this deployment or reconfiguration outside of our observation. That size increase and the formation flying that feels like irrefutable evidence that its trajectory was designed to facilitate a specific, necessary, and hidden action. I agree that the post-conjunction observations are the most compelling evidence we have of complex organization, yes. But we cannot yet definitively confirm deployment over structured fragmentation. Even in natural physics, fragmentation can be structured, though maybe not like this. For a machine operating outside known physical constraints, this organized release of mass or energy, the splitting, could simply be a required phase for transitioning the course functionality, which just happened to occur during the predictable orbital conjunction. The 40% apparent size increase, for instance. Well, it might not be a physical increase in mass, but perhaps a massive expansion of its localized space-time distortion field as it powers up its primary drive system. Maybe after using the sun's gravitational mass or energy field for refueling or optimization. The crucial logical fallacy remains, I think. Did it utilize the hiding to deploy or did the deployment occur during the solar conjunction because that specific high energy geometric alignment was required to maximize the efficiency of its physics defying drive? The object's behavior suggests its operation is fundamentally linked to the surrounding cosmos, specifically massive gravitational wells. If its propulsion system interacts with the sun's mass in some unique way to facilitate these changes, then the conjunction is a necessary operational environment, not necessarily a cunning strategic choice for stealth against us. That distinction between strategy against us versus operational necessity is fair, I see that, but let's shift the focus to the resulting path, regardless of who or what the action was aimed at. The course correction wasn't random. It was specifically pointed and aligned toward Earth's orbital path, the ecliptic plane. So if the splitting and the size increase during the conjunction do represent a successful transition to a system, then that system is now directed toward our sector of the solar system. Combine this specific vector with those internal patterns described as instructions, and the implication of the deployment becomes, well, extremely unsettling. We have a powerful, organized construct that used a solar blind spot to transition into a multi-body formation, and it is now navigating precisely toward our orbital plane. The question has to be asked, what happens when it reaches the distortion point? And would something step out of the distortion with it? The destination, the concealment, and the deployment, it all points to an intentional navigation relative to Earth. The object isn't just drifting or following some random energy maximum. It seems to be navigating with a purpose, and its destination vector is clear. While the resultant vector aligned with the ecliptic is, yes, undeniably unsettling, we must recall the physics of its movement, what we observed. The ultimate distortion observed, the bending of starlight into those warped spirals, it intensified precisely when the internal glow pulsed brightest. This implies the movement, the distortion, and the path are intrinsically linked to its internal power source, or reactor, which uh, utilizes massive photonic emissions to generate its warp effect. But why must that optimization inherently point toward Earth's orbital plane? Couldn't optimization be achieved anywhere else in the system? Well, it's theorized that maximizing the efficiency of a field drive like this might require specific interactions with the gravitational fabric of a solar system. The ecliptic plane, being the region of greatest mass density and gravitational interactions within our solar system, might simply represent the path of least resistance or greatest efficiency for this specific type of propulsion. If its drive system maximizes power output by interacting with the solar system in a way that naturally yields a trajectory aligned toward the ecliptic plane, then the Earth alignment could just be a secondary consequence of maximizing its physics-defying drive system's operational efficiency. We might be witnessing a machine following its most efficient path of travel through a complex gravitational environment, and we're interpreting that trajectory through our own lens of human strategy and priority. I still maintain that the totality of the evidence, the precise, non-chaotic steering, 
possibly enabled by what appear to be embedded instruction sets, the calculated alignment towards Earth's path, and the undeniable post-conjunction evidence of deployment and size increase, it all suggests the October 2025 conjunction wasn't just some lucky coincidence of orbital mechanics. It feels like a strategically utilized blind spot for a critical maneuver, transitioning it from a single visitor to an active navigating construct that is now clearly a system trailing secondary bodies along a specified vector. I just don't buy that it was necessarily hiding for our benefit or hiding from us specifically. While 3 Iveless is clearly active, clearly operating outside known physics, until we understand the true nature of that core, that engineered void, and how its exotic propulsion truly functions, the precise timeline of its transit remains open to interpretation. We're left with two equally compelling evidence-based possibilities, aren't we? Is it strategic intent driven by necessity and calculated stealth, or is it merely the natural, structured manifestation of a vehicle capable of redefining fundamental forces following its most efficient, if, yes, deeply unsettling, operational trajectory? What the material absolutely confirms, regardless of our disagreement on the exact nature of the intent, is that this object's October 2025 transition was a pivotal moment. The object is now organized. It's moving with apparent purpose along the path it established during that blind spot. Indeed, and it forces us to confront the possibility that 3i Atlas isn't just traveling faster than light, but might be truly cheating distance itself, which makes the October 2025 timeline a crucial moment for potentially redefining humanity's understanding of physics and uh, perhaps our place in the cosmic hierarchy.